might have seen from some of my previous videos, Ennismorn, Anglesey, is a beautiful place, a lovely place you might like to retire to. Unfortunately for one chap, a guy called Gerald Corrigan, who was I believe a retired lecturer, his happy retirement came to a sudden and shocking end on the 19th of April 2019. So yes, Poor old Gerald would have been on the other side of that cottage. He found in the middle of the night, I believe it was about April the 19th, 2019, or April 20th, I'm not sure which, his signal suddenly cut off. He went outside. He found he needed to adjust his aerial on his satellite dish. As he was doing so, he thought he had an electric shock. Cried out for help. His partner came down. Only to find him seriously unwell. Ambulance was called, etc. As the ambulance comes up to treat the man for his electric shock, they find a crossbow box. He hadn't had an electric shock, he'd been shot by a crossbow. He'd been shot somewhere over the far, over the far side of the cottage, not from here. For me to go there would really impinge on the people's privacy and I'm not prepared to do that. So yeah, in amongst all of this beauty, this wilderness, this quietness, tragedy struck. He was murdered. Why was he murdered? Who did it? The story unfolds as we go along. So I'm now going to head to uh, another location and we'll have a quick chat about it when we get there. In the meantime, one last fleeting look. Let's go. While we're travelling to the next location, hopefully you can appreciate the different styles of roads that can be found on Anglesey in a small so what did it actually happen about this crossbow killing? Well, some absolutely fantastic work by North Wales Police and all the various people in there, um, such as the uh, CSI teams, etc. They did some fantastic work, liaised with outside agencies as well. And being brilliant detectives and brilliant CSI um, staff, they managed to work out that a guy called Terence Wall, who lived in a nearby village called Bringuran, had to be the person that had fired the shot, uh, shotgun, what am I on about the crossbow? Um, it was found out by ascertaining the make of the crossbow, the make of the bolts, and I think it turned out there were only two people in the UK or something like that that could have um, had that combination of equipment and fired it. So they narrowed it down to the two people, the other person's a cast iron, iron alibi, and through some sterling work regarding the telematics of um, one of the vehicles the wall had access to, it was um, shown to the court that it would have been him. 
that would have been there at the time and had the equipment so he had the only opportunity really to do it which then begs the question of why did he do it what was his motive to do it so you know normally you hear about you even have to have a motive you have to have the opportunity and you have to um, be able to carry out the method so we know he had the equipment we know he had the ability to do it we know uh, Terence Wall was um, in the right place what we don't know is why why was he there why did Gerald Corrigan get um, assassinated and the tragedy is to this day we still don't know will we ever know I'm not sure um, Wall was put away for some 30 31 years something like that so he's gonna be an old man before he comes out of prison assuming he lives long enough in prison um, but the court case was slightly odd from what I can gather from press reports and media reports that I've seen there was a completely separate and unattached scenario now Wall had an argument with a chap called he says can't remember the chap's name Richard Wynne Lewis he had an argument with him over owing him some money or something like that I don't know interestingly just before the killing Gerald who was killed was believed to be in some sort of dispute and I understand that November last year sometime about around that time this, this Richard Lynn Lewis character um, went to prison and he could be coming out any day now if he's not already out for fraud against Gerald Corrigan now it has to be said the, the coincidence of the, the argument between Wall and Wynne Lewis and the dispute between Corrigan and Wynne Lewis there is absolutely no link between them to the murder there is absolutely no link nothing's been proven and nothing should be assumed as being the case it's just this is a, a, a fact that was there and subsequently as I say uh, Wynne Lewis who lives not that far from um, Corrigan was put in prison for uh, this massive fraud and Corrigan may well I suppose have been going to shop him but it must be said and I repeat it again it's got nothing the murder has nothing to do with Wynne Lewis um, this is Wynne Lewis's old farm where he used to live um, quite interesting gates actually I, I was really impressed with them um, and he's uh, a well-known character with equine interests apparently and uh, you can see there on the gates those horses yeah really interesting and it's a really nice little lane just round that I'm gonna go and do a bit of an explore actually but yeah so um, it's one of those strange events where this chap Win Lewis seems to be linked in the whole scenario between a murderer a victim and he's been found out you know we have to assume he's totally innocent in the old murdering scenario but he's been found out for the fraud as a result of this other character's actions hmm anyway so let's have a quick explore around and have a look at these lanes and I'll explain to you what happened now Wall thought he was being very clever he borrowed this car from I think it was his partner while she was away on holiday 
and it was a modern car it was a Land Rover Discovery and <laughs> what he did was he got another one of his friends and I believe he was involved in it or maybe two friends I don't know the exact number but um, after the uh, how, what should we call it the assassination the car was driven to a completely different location to uh, near a quarry and it's beautiful views up there I'm going to take you there one day and um, yeah they, they committed arson burnt the vehicle out now what they didn't realize was by burning the vehicle out all they did was burn the vehicle out what they didn't do was destroy the telematics so the telematics of the vehicle uh, being a modern prestige car if you call Land Rover Discovery's prestige which I do um, they had uh, automatically they, they download all their telematics into the cloud don't ask me why I haven't got a clue I'm, I'm too old to understand these things but I do know they do it so this discovery downloaded all its telematics so the police and the CSI and the special consultants were able to look at what was downloaded and they even go to such detail is the car pulls up in this particular location the offside front door driver's side to you and me is opened within 30 seconds it is closed and the boot lid is opened it remains open for a short period of time then it gets closed um, blah 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 so it can actually go down to that level of detail you know how many people sat in how many seat belts were put on it's an amazing equipment uh, somewhere on YouTube you can actually see a presentation from how detailed they could get it uh, and it was fascinating but yeah absolutely man amazing the police the CSI the consultants got it down and they actually could trace the whole actions of the vehicle they managed to find CCTV from one of the campsites close to Gerald's home that just happened to get a distant glance of the same type of vehicle so it was all fitting in had they not used a modern car had Terence not used a modern car that had got this super duper system he would never probably have got caught there was no DNA to link him there was no um, no evidence to link him to that site other than a tiny bit of CCTV oh and this raft of uh, evidence on the good old uh, Land Rover Discovery marvellous piece of equipment it was so yeah he was banged to rights by the sound of it so he's been put away for 30 odd years uh, Richard Wynne Lewis bless him um, gets convicted of a fraud that probably would never have been found out had um, the murder not occurred etc 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 and the fact that in all the kerfuffle um, Terry was caught having an argument with him he probably would have got away with with the fraud but he didn't um, so if you're up to no good you never know how you might end up getting in, getting yourself in trouble so there you go right so um, we're just coming through an area this is um, sometimes flooded uh, I was a bit disappointed actually because it's it's all fairly dry there today but uh, never mind so there you go so what we're going to do now I've come through here I'm going to leave the video uh, in a short while and in the next part we'll go and have a look at um, where they try to um, hide the evidence by burning a car that had already put the evidence somewhere very safe hmm it's almost an object lesson in how not to commit a murder, isn't it, really? Never mind. Whoa, railway bridge. That's where the train goes from Harley uh, to London. I'm just going to show you a few more seconds, uh, put a bit of music to it, showing the uh, rest of this lane. Thanks for watching. Bye.